on today's show, the red hot Houston Rockets get their seventh straight win against the Chicago Bulls. Dylan Brooks and DeMar DeRozan ejected how Jalen Green got it done against a very good Bulls defense. The bench brigade for the Rockets absolutely huge in this win. It's all coming up right here at Locked on Rockets. This is Mission Control, Houston. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one. What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. As always, I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, native Houstonian and credentialed media member. I'm also the host of Locked on NBA Mondays. Be sure to follow along on Twitter at JT Gatlin and the show, of course, at Locked on Rockets, free and available wherever you listen to your podcasts, including YouTube. Now, today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use code all lower case locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. And as always, thank you so much for checking out the show, whether it's on your way to work, on your lunch break, in the gym. Thank you for being an everyday and making the show part of your day every single day. Joining us now to talk about your red hot Houston Rockets and their 127 117 win against the Chicago Bulls. Now, seven straight wins in a row is none other than your weekly co host, NBA draft enthusiast, and diehard Rockets fan, Madison Moore. You can track down on Twitter at Madman Leaks. Madison, this Rockets team is firing on all cylinders, and they do not look like they're showing any signs of slowing down anytime soon, taking care of business at home against a a Chicago Bulls team that is just as desperate to make the NBA play-in tournament as they are, right? They have just as much to gain and just as much to lose from a game like this one. And the Rockets just out-hustled them. They 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 out-muscled them when things got chippy there in the third quarter. We saw DeMar DeRozan, Dylan Brooks ejected in this game. We saw another 25-plus point performance from Jalen Green. He was stellar in this one. And probably the biggest deciding factor of this game, the bench unit, the bench production in this game from Jock Landale, Jeff Green, and Aaron Holiday was so integral to getting this win. Yeah, man, I'm really proud of these Rockets. This was a really tough win. A lot of people uh, kind of look at the Chicago Bulls and think they're uh, a bad team, but this is actually a very strong team. And they're in all, and they like are, I I see, I heard on a podcast, on an NBA podcast that they are in every game. They're they're like leading the league in like fourth quarter, uh, you know, uh, whatever close games, basically. clutch Fourth time quarter. execute, clutch yeah, time yeah, execute. Clutch, it's something like that. Because of DeMar DeRozan, yeah, right, Usually, exactly, yeah. yes, of, of course, uh, of course, because of Demar Derozan. But this, but this Chicago team is a real legitimate good team, and it was going to be a really good test with these these new look Houston Rockets uh, without E out. And I think they passed with flying colors. I thought this was. Uh, 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 a very much a team effort. I thought their defense, I thought their defensive activity was really good, even though they let some guys get off. But it was still an excellent game from uh, the all-around game from these Rockets. I thought they played with incredible pace today, especially early in the game. They really kind of pushed the lead out because there was a lot of shots being made. But once they started getting some stops and increasing their pace, and even when they didn't get stops, even when they didn't turn guys over, the off misses, they ran a lot. And they got out in transition and got some easy buckets. Um, Love Jalen Green's performance tonight. Uh, They... Now teams are going to start game planning for Jalen. He's no longer surprising guys. And you can see how aggressive they were playing on the screens. Um, and with Alex Caruso and uh, Ayo Desumu, they have some very good wing defenders. And Jalen Green stayed patient throughout this game, and he got the looks that he wanted. I like that uh, his first, like, three, four buckets were not isolation buckets. They were just off the kick, uh, off the uh, transition, and that helped him get into rhythm and build his confidence. And as we've seen as the game went on, he was just stellar and, and, and excellent offensively. Yeah, this was a game. I mean, Jalen Green, outside the arc, 4 of 12 shooting. He had a couple really nice step backs. He had a big one late in the game there. Just, just a great read, drove, mm-hmm. got his defender off of him, stepped back into the left corner, drilled a tough, tough three-pointer. Um, 4 of 12 shooting from there. He was 6 of 10 uh, inside the three-point line in this one. I'm doing quick math on this. Yeah, 6 of 10 mm-hmm. inside the three-point line. Sorry, that's always sketch when I try and do the quick math there. But 26 points for him, 4 rebounds, 3 assists, a steal, a block. And it really felt like he turned up 
his scoring after uh, Dylan Brooks got ejected, right? So this was a, a game with some some weird game flow in this one where the Rockets jumped out of that big first quarter lead, 42-28. They were, I mean, Dylan Brooks had an 11-point first quarter. Aaron Holiday checked into the game. They had a quick eight points in a row in that first quarter. Um <laughs> They were they were they, they were firing all cylinders to start the game and things got a little mucky and kind of clunky there in that second quarter. That's when the Bulls decided to roll out their double big lineup when they ran Andre Drummond and Nikola Vucevic at the same time. And that lineup felt like it gave the Rockets problems, not because they were like beaten up on the Rockets inside, but it was just weird because defensively it felt like the Rockets were giving way too much attention to the two bigs or, or specifically to whichever one of the bigs was being checked by the Rockets like wing player, right? Because they would have one. One big out there and then they'd have their wings and guards and whether it was like Amin Thompson or Dylan Brooks or whoever was having to check Vucevic or Drummond on a given possession and it was kind of by themselves it felt like they were kind of over rotating or over helping kind of trying to be in position in case they went to the big and because of they they weren't putting enough pressure on the perimeter guys right so guys like Ayo Desumu were, were getting some wide open looks you know Kobe White was getting some some open looks in that stretch of time in that second quarter the uh at least, at least going up to halftime, the Bulls managed to erase that 19-point mm -hmm. lead that the Rockets had built up. Uh, they were plus 16 in the minutes, at least as far as half. You know, the first half of the game is concerned. Uh, when they ran that double big lineup, and we get to the third quarter though, and you know it was kind of a little bit of a, a back and forth affair, mm -hmm. and things were getting a little chippy. And then we had this probably like the sequence of the game, right, which was. Jalen Green blocked DeMar DeRozan on a breakaway layup attempt, you know, had him dead to rights right there at the rim. I'm surprised DeMar didn't finish it, honestly, because he's bigger and stronger than Jalen. Credit to Jalen, though. He got like a couple fingertips on the ball, whatever it was, blocked him at the rim. And then a few possessions later, I guess DeMar took like exception to this and just completely laid him out on the floor, like dropped him, uh, you know, trying to cover him you know, on, on a switch defensively and just he was on the floor and then all like all hell broke loose in the middle of Toyota Center when this happened, where Dylan Brooks came straight up to DeMar DeRozan, did not like that he laid Jalen Green out, got directly in his face. Both teams were getting at, you know, going after each other. They had to be separated. You had guys coming in and, you know, the refs had to calm everything out. They were already going to go look at the play, the foul mm. DeMar DeRozan committed on Jalen Green. They were going to go look at that. Then they had to go back and look at even more of it to see who escalated and all this stuff. Ultimately, DeMar DeRozan ejected flagrant two. Dylan Brooks only assigned one technical, but was ejected for, quote-unquote, escalating the, the conflict, which is, I'm going to say, Madison, yeah. is complete BS because, yeah. like, Dylan Brooks gets officiated based on his, like, reputation, I feel like, worse than anybody else in the NBA. Yeah, so... Uh, I thought that was absolutely, absolutely ridiculous. Like, and I honestly think, you know, somebody should be reprimanded for, for that in the refs because you can't show me where there were two technical incidents. And number, and number two, the main aggressor, which was, let's be frank. I mean, that was a pretty dirty play by DeRozan. It was very intentional. And that's why they immediately, uh, uh, spun up. And when you do plays like that, you know what that leads to with, with teammates. And it looked like Jalen got hurt on that play at least temporarily and so hey dylan's gonna let you know about it and dylan to me didn't even come after the replays he didn't even come very aggressively he just came put his hand and said, and said something and demar Derozan immediately snapped i mean this dude was De completely DeMar, like, out of he flung, yeah, he flung elbow his dylan. elbow he was, like he he's losing it like he he's like he completely lost his composure in that situation. And and he became even the bigger aggressor. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if you swing your elbow and connect any type, type of way with my chin, I'm connecting back with you. And, but Dylan Brooks did not do that. He actually grabbed him and said, hold on. You know what I mean? And I thought that was... I thought that was actually him showing a lot of restraint because he could have slammed him or or really got into a really dangerous alter altercation because I think it was warranted. I mean, uh, DeMar DeRozan was the, the aggressor the entire way throughout that sequence. And then I was listening to the Chicago broadcast, and I just have to bring this up. 
I mean, just classless, bro. Like, y- y'all are so biased that you you didn't see anything wrong that DeMar DeRozan. No mention of his his attempted flagrant, uh, any problems with that. Just on and on about uh, Dylan's reputation. They ran a whole litany list of all the, the dirty plays that they thought Dylan had committed when their own player just committed a, de- a dirty play in game time and tried to deflect. I mean, that's just... Terrible homerism by those guys over there. So I just wanted to say that uh, on the record, honestly. No, but, yeah. yeah. <laughs> look, look yeah. that that was the, that was the kind of I think like the the momentum shifting play of the game because obviously, look in a vacuum, if you're gonna say we'll 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 take out Demar Derozan, you take out Dylan Brooks, you kind of like that trade if you're the Rockets, right? Because them not having Demar mm-hmm. Derozan is a bigger loss for the Bulls. But unfortunately, in this game up to that point, Dylan Brooks had been the like a lot of the Rockets' offense. He yeah. had 23 points on 10 of 13 yeah. shooting. Dylan Brooks was on one in this game, so it was kind of a concern that you lost your leading scorer and the guy that was putting up so much of your offensive production, albeit, you know, the bench had been really great to that point, but you still needed guys to put the ball in the bucket. Jabari was having a really rough game. Fred was, you know, overall kind of a quiet night, even though he was dishing out a lot of assists. Quiet offensive night for Fred. And so Jalen really helped, I think, step up there, you know, after Dylan Brooks got, mm-hmm. it got got tossed and took over some of the scoring burden. We also saw Jock Landale and Jeff Green, the rest of the bench guys, kind of really put all their heads together and get it done there in the fourth quarter, being able to take home this win. Want to talk about more from this game? We got to give our flowers to the bench unit for their insane production in this one as well as final thoughts we're going to get there in just one moment first today's episode is brought to you by prize picks prize picks is america's number one fantasy sports app with over three million members they're the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports because it's just you against the numbers you just pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in prize picks is so simple to play you can make your picks and submit an entry in less than 60 seconds quick withdrawals easy gameplay and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what makes prize picks the number one dfs app on the market and it's now demon time on prize picks demons and goblins are the newest and most exciting way to play at prize picks squares marked with red demons or green goblins get you different payouts you can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks so if you've been thinking about trying daily fantasy sports give prize picks a chance go to prizepicks.com slash locked on nba and use code locked on nba for a first deposit match up to 100 again that's prizepicks.com slash locked on nba with promo code locked on nba for a first deposit match up to 100 prize picks pick more pick less it's that easy Easy. And continuing on here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball in Madison. A big part of this Houston Rockets 127-117 win against the Bulls. The absolutely insane bench production that they got from their trio of Aaron Holiday, Jock Landale, and Jeff Green. I think this might be arguably the best that the Rockets bench has played all season long. They've had some really good games this season where you know one or two of the bench guys have stepped up in a big way. This one really felt like you couldn't have gotten this win without the bench, right? Because obviously you needed guys to step up and fill the void that Dylan Brooks left after being ejected midway through the third quarter. So finishing out the game strong. You also needed guys to step up because Jabari Smith Jr. had some foul trouble in this game. He only played 22 minutes. He also wasn't playing that well when he was in the game, unfortunately. So you needed that extra production, and it really felt like from the jump, right? I mean, Jock Landale continued his incredible play in this game. He had 17 points, 12 rebounds, a career-high tying five assists, and two block shots. So follows up his seven-block performance with another set of blocks in this one. Six of ten shooting from the four. He was five of five at the free throw, and he led all bench scorers with 17 points in this game. Aaron Holiday mentioned it earlier. He had the eight quick points in that first mm-hmm. quarter. He finished with 15 for the evening, though. Looked like he was just on a mission, really efficient, really great with his shot selection, um, some top, you know, some you know, hard-nosed defense being played. And then Jeff Green, who suddenly has, like, a heater from three-point range. Like, yeah. I don't know, he, he literally <laughs> turned into Ray Allen all of a sudden because he had struggled, like, all season with his outside shot. And now over these last handful of games, it's like he can't miss from from three-point land. He shot 50% in this one, three of six from downtown, five of eight overall, had 15 points and seven boards in this game. I was so impressed with all three of those guys. 
Yeah, uh, huge performance from our bench because, as you said, Jabari was in foul trouble. And um, although Fred, I thought, was very good to, uh, today, he did not shoot it well from the field. I think he was 3 of 11. Um, so we needed uh, this this bench scoring. And as they played aggressive uh, defense against Jalen and Fred Van Vliet, we needed guys to knock down shots. And time and time again, Jeff Green knocked down threes, big threes, I thought, throughout the uh, course of this game. And – Jock Landell's activity on the boards, his screen setting, his steadiness, man. He really gives this team what, what, uh, what we've been, what we miss in Shingoon. Even when, the passing, his passing. Yeah, his even the passing, in the, bro. In the middle of the I'm floor. Like, like, oh my so God. Many, he had so many good reads from the middle of the floor. I'm just like watching this. I'm like, Maybe him like riding the bench for as long as he did and like watching Shingoon as much. He was just like, he probably picked up a thing or two and like legitimately they're using him in a very similar way. Like put the ball in the middle of the floor to Jock Landale, let him turn. Mm -hmm. He's got the push shot. He's got the outlet to the threes, mm -hmm. like the screen. It's all, it's all there. He's kind of playing like a poor man Shingoon with slightly he better is. defense, I think. Yes, no, he really is a poor man Shingoon. It's almost like. Oh, I watched Shingun do all these things. I know what is needed of me now. You know what I mean? And I actually have a, a pretty good skill set to do so. And then the defense, man, these blocks, dog, like he's in the right spots. I mean, even some of these offensive putbacks, like he had a huge offensive rebound and one putback to seal this game. I mean, that type the of dagger activity. Put yeah. Yes, man. That type of activity is what we went, we've been needing. All season from my bench, and it's coming right when we need it on this stretch run, dog. Like and I it's, gotta get it's worth it's worth noting that dagger put back. The Rockets had gone, uh, they they had gone scoreless for a little bit there near the tail end of the mm -hmm. fourth quarter. They were kind of yeah. they were kind of flirting with giving up this game for a minute there. <laughs> they it, the the Bulls were on a 10-0 run, and then Jock Landale got the offensive put back. Mm -hmm. The and one sealed it at the free throw line. Nice little three point play for him. That really was kind of the the dagger, and then the cherry on top was the uh, the Amin Thompson just little 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 yeah, soft, yeah. you know, a little soft dunk at the very end of regulation to really put this one away yeah man uh so i just yeah i, I completely agree dog Jacques, Jacques was huge i mean there's there's certain momentum plays like that that get you through games and as the rockets you can kind of see they had kind of taken their foot off the gas uh gas there and the chicago did not they were they were still trying to win that game and the rockets kind of thought it was over and they kind of had a mental lapse there which is good for their development they they have to understand they have to finish these games strong but that that's what we need that is what we need from Jock Landale. and jeff green was excellent tonight i thought he hit some big open threes all throughout the game in big moments and of course holiday was uh, steady and consistent all night man we got to give kudos to those guys cuz we don't get that win tonight uh without them and that's why this is an all-around team effort. Absolutely. And and it kind of speaking, just an extension, right, is I, I really do feel like obviously things got super chippy in this game, the ejections, everything kind of midway through that third quarter. But it really feels like this team has done such a great job at responding when things get kind of chippy, when things get extra physical, when they got a team that's trying to, you know, trying to, uh, you know, give them the smoke, whatever. They're, they're, they're all about it. They're, they are trying to, like, when, when those things happen, they, they mention it on the broadcast, and I'm not sure the other games off the top of my dome, but apparently the Rockets, at least in the year 2024, are now 4-0 in games where things have gotten, where there's been like altercations or where, you know, there's been a scrum in the middle, that kind of thing. I We would need to sit down. In fact, if you're watching this, if you're listening, if you know the four games off the top of your head, put them in the YouTube comments because I'm like... I, we're, we're recording this right after the game ended. So like, haven't had any time to like sit here and try and collect my thoughts and trying to figure out which games the Rockets I wonder if Suns is referencing. One. So, Oh, Suns had to be one, right? They, yeah, things Suns got one. super chippy in that game. So there yeah. we go. All right. We got one of them, right? So <laughs> Suns and Bulls, that's two of the four. Apparently there are two more in there somewhere where things got a little chippy. Things got a little heated. Um, and the Rockets have won all those. And, and it kind of matches the eye test, right? This team has embraced that personality where they you you can't F with this team, man. If you do, then they eat they turn it up a notch, right? They get and they get after it. Even where where's my where's my there it is. They're getting after it like <laughs> they're supposed to. <laughs> there we go. No, like, but for real, like that's the cool thing about this team is they're they're not gonna get punked, right? And mm -hmm. I think there was a point earlier this season where Ime Odoka even said something like, he, you know, he was like, we we were getting punked out there. We, we mm -hmm. like we didn't have the right physicality. We didn't have the right mental makeup. And ever since I think that moment, this team has done a really good job of, of responding a lot better when a team comes out and tries to hit you in the mouth or whatever, or they try to out physical you out tough you, whatever. This Rockets team has responded in a really, really big way every time that's happened now. Yeah, uh, 
it's MA's identity. It's what he's been instilling in our young guys. And now they are doing it in a consistent manner. And it came at the right time. Little little camera glitch on my behalf. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> no, no, I, yeah, and, and you know it's the worst because it glitched and I had like such a derpy look on my face. I was like, uh. So anyway, anyways, coming up, we want to talk a little bit more about Jalen's really impressive game in this one, getting it done against a very good Chicago Bulls defense. Alex Caruso, an All NBA caliber defender, how Jalen was able to have such a successful night in this one. Plus, final thoughts from this game. We're gonna get there in just one moment. First, today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. And a final segment here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. Now, I know we went over kind of Jalen's stat line earlier, gave him gave him some props for a really strong performance. We didn't really get too granular with it, though, but I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about what we saw from Jalen in this game, Madison, because... I thought, first off, the way that the Bulls' defense was handling him was probably the most aggressive defense that he's seen so far in this stretch where he's been playing kind of out of his mind. Clearly, you know, teams, it's taken a second for them to kind of adjust to the new-look Rockets, the five-out spacing, the way that they're playing now without Alper and Shingun in the lineup. He was at the top, you know, he's probably spots one, two, and three on the scouting report for most of the season. Now you're seeing Jalen Green occupying that spot. And very early on, it was clear that the Bulls were going to guard him in a really aggressive way. They had Alex Caruso as, as his primary defender. Now, there were times when they felt comfortable switching, you know, Desumu or Tory Craig onto him situationally throughout the game. But they were also really physical with him, loading up on him whenever he ran pick and roll, hedging, putting the bigs on him, right? And it really felt like time and time again, Jalen did a really great job of making the proper reads out of those situations. Whether it was, okay, you're sending two guys at him, cool, where's my outlet pass, right? Who do I swing the ball to to get the defense in rotation or to generate an open shot? Or like we talked about earlier, right, that really impressive step back three that he had where he came out of the pick and roll, they tried to send the, the big at him, they tried to hedge, and he just went to the corner because that was the open spot on the floor. Boom, step back, three-pointer in the corner, easy peasy. A lot of the reads that he made in this game felt like the culmination of kind of all the trial and error of this season, right, where we've seen him make so many significant leaps and strides in his playmaking and in his ability to make those reads. And now we're seeing it coupled with his newfound confidence, right? Or, or I should say his renewed confidence to be able to score the basketball at, at the elite level that we always kind of knew he could, but he was just struggling to, to get back to for a while there. Yeah. Uh, Jalen, once again, excellent game. And this is what we were talking about. We've been talking about Jalen hasn't shot the ball well this year. We all know it, but he's gotten so much better at the other areas of his game. And so now, now that teams are game planning against now that he's hot again and he's back on and he's the Jalen we know, they're still going to try and get him out of rhythm. And when you, when you try and get a guy out of rhythm, they'll, a lot of times they can force up some really bad shots, but Jalen trusted the process and continued to make the right reads. And because he made the right reads, those hockey assists, they ignite the offense. We just had a whole segment about how well our bench played, how well our others played tonight. And that was due to the initial actions initiated by Jalen and uh, Fred Van Vliet tonight. This is how you play as a team. This is how everybody is needed. And it's good to see Jalen let the game come to him throughout uh, t through tonight. I mean, even in the first quarter, there was not a lot of isolation from Jalen in the first, uh, as well as uh, in the first half, because the Rockets played. They didn't need that from him at that moment. And he understood that he just played within the conference finds of the offense and got to the basket and scored very well. I like to give MA a shout out uh, with their over aggressive defense. They drew up that ATL where he got, got where he got that backdoor uh, monster dunk, that type of stuff. 
is so huge for Jalen's rhythm, number one, and number two, to back those guys up. You know what I mean? If you're gonna if you're gonna be over aggressive on these dribble handoffs, we need to show you that we'll make you pay. And, I, and those are the type of things that you that you draw up as a coach that gets your team in rhythm. And so I love the fact that uh, MA has really showed the way to these young guys, and now they're doing it more naturally as well, and they're taking on his identity. And just an excellent game from Jalen. When we needed him most in this game, I thought he hit big, tough shots down the stretch. Like you said, when he when he um, hit that three in the corner, that was such a huge shot. The Rockets were struggling for, for offense, and he showed up like a real star. Also, notice we didn't have any of those, uh, you know, loose turnovers that we usually see from Jalen, right? Those things are starting to go as his confidence uh, 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 awakens, right? As he continues to finish inside the arc and in the meet in the mid range, uh, Jalen shot okay from three tonight, but that six of 10 inside the arc is where the real growth is coming from Jalen. And that's why we don't see those huge letdown games anymore. Jalen can go one from 10 in the game and they still, his offense still keeps this, 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 uh, team going. His, uh, playmaking keeps this team going. And it's just incredible growth from Jalen, man. I'm super proud of him. And there's just something to right like you know he could have had a game earlier this season where you know he would have gotten a ton of wide open looks playing off of other guys right you know Al P creating Fred creating and he might have gone one for eight two for ten whatever and and like the body language just wasn't right on those shots right because you could tell like with every miss he was getting inside his head thinking mm-hmm. damn there's another miss another miss right mm-hmm. this game four of twelve that's still not great percent you're talking thirty three percent but at no point did I look at any of his threes and think, damn, that's bad body language, or damn, he's getting inside his own head. No, every three he pulled, I was like, it's going in. And then, like, no, he and, believed it was going in exactly. too. And that's <laughs> like, he believes, like, hey, if I could just get this thing off, it's going down. And that is the type of level. Uh, that's the that's that instinct that we need. Yes, yeah. that's the confidence we need from, from Jalen. And man, just, man, I, for a guy to improve this well within within a, a one season is just amazing, dog. Like, you know, I'm through the roof for Jalen right now, man. I hope he can continue it. Yeah, man. Look, credit to Ime Odoka and, and the rest of the Rockets coaching staff and the organization for kind of having the vision, you know, staying patient with him, even through all the, the bumps and the bruises along the way, because now we're starting to see it really pay off, right? And this is, again, you could have maybe put asterisks next to, like, the Wizards games or the Spurs game if you wanted to, but, you know, he's done it now against the Cavaliers. He's done it against the Bulls. It fe- This feels like a different stretch from Jalen. This feels like like something permanent that he's unlocked, something that he can build on moving forward. And that's what makes it really exciting, right? Ime talked about it, breaking him down, building him back up as a new player. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm so excited to see how the rest of his season plays out and where he's able to take this Rockets team to. Last guy we, got, we want to talk about here just for a moment as we kind of wrap things up, uh, it was a rough night for Jabari Smith Jr., unfortunately. And, you know, some of that has to do with foul trouble, right? He had the early couple fouls. You know, he, he just couldn't really ever get into a rhythm. This game, only two of 10 shooting from the floor, missed all four of his threes, uh, had seven boards, but I just... You know, in the minutes that he was out there, especially when he got back on the floor in the second quarter, especially against that unit uh, that the Bulls were running with the double bigs, I would have liked to see him be able to do something more against one of Drummond or Vucevic right now. Like Jabari is not a guy that you're expecting to put the ball on the floor and, you know, hit like a little tween hezzy and get to, <laughs> you know, do whatever, break somebody down off the dribble. But when you're being guarded by legit fives, like that should be a mismatch in favor of Jabari to be able to, you know, at least off a kick out, right? Kick it out to Jabari. One of them closes out too hard on you They They close out with the wrong foot, whatever drive in, finish hard at the rim, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, I just, I'm a little disappointed that we didn't see a little more from him in the minutes after, you know, like that, that he was on the floor when the foul trouble wasn't a thing, um, whether it was in the second quarter or when he was back there in the fourth quarter, just needed to see a little more from him. It was just kind of a rough game, but we also know that Jabari's, you know, had some rough games this season and he's also bounced back from these rough games. So it's not something crazy that, you know, is going to be like, I don't think it's a trend or anything. It's just something, it was just a disappointing game from him. Yeah, uh, I think uh, the the refs kind of took him out of the game and took him out of rhythm. I actually thought he was okay in the first half. He just didn't play enough. But when he played, he was okay. I thought he hit like, you know, a good little and one against Drummond, I believe. I don't know. That might be in the second half. But I thought he was okay. His shot was not on. And I think the the big 
open, wide open threes in the fourth quarter, the top of the fourth, where we needed his offense. We needed him to lead that unit. And he had he got four wide open threes and he missed them all. I mean, it's, you know, it's a make a it's a make or miss lead. But then you compound that with the soft defense that he was playing because he had been in foul trouble. Hey man, we I understand you're you're in foul trouble and you, you can't play as uh, aggressive aggressive as you want to. Um, but DeMar DeRozan's out of the game, the guy they was giving those ticky tack fouls to. You know what I mean? I, we need you to be strong in that paint because that is what we need you in there for. Be strong in that paint. Um, you had two fouls you could get in that quarter. So I, w- I just would have liked him to be more tough in that because those are the things that he can't control. You know, you make or miss shots. Um, but luckily, Jeff Green was on to pick uh, pick our guy up, and hopefully he'll, be, he'll bounce back next game. And then very quietly, Amin Thompson with 15 points, eight oh, rebounds, yeah. three assists, a steal. He just, he just he's the Swiss Army knife, man. He just goes out there, does his job. He attempted Defensive a three, did, didn't make it. He it, uh, uh, Amin Thompson was good defensively, uh, albeit he did get, he got got at one point by DeMar DeRozan. I was like, First oh, quarter, though. rookie hey, learning moment, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you give me, fool me once, shame on <laughs> Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame yeah. on me. And he didn't get him a second time. So it was a, a nice learning experience for Amin Thompson. But overall, a very fun game. Rockets now with seven straight wins in a row. Next game, they play against the Utah Jazz Saturday night in Toyota. And that's going to be a hell of a game. A really fun one teed up there. Rockets hopefully can keep this winning streak going. And they are only a couple games behind the Golden State Warriors and the LA Lakers for one of those final play-in spots in the Western Conference. I'm telling you, Madison, that April 4th game against the Golden State Warriors is going to be a movie. That is going to be that is going to be the game that probably decides who gets into the postseason, who gets into the play-in tournament. Uh, and I'll tell you what, I am here for it, man. If the Rockets are able, I said this the other day online, but it would be absolute poetry for the young Houston Rockets at the start of their rebuild to eliminate the end of dynasty Golden State Warriors and knock them out of the postseason, knock them out of the play-in tournament. Uh, either straight up knock them out just so they don't get in, or if you do make it to the play-in tournament and it's like Warriors 9 seed, Rockets 10 seed, and the Lakers are kicked out, then oh my god, that that single elimination you know, play-in tournament game is going to be everything, and I am absolutely here for it, man. Yeah, no, I'm I'm super excited about it just because I feel like, like you said, like this may decide who gets into the play in, which is a built in playoff game in the regular season. So we'll get a little bit of playoff action uh, 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 early. So that, I mean, to me, I think that's really good. It's good to play meaningful games. And like I said, this was a very tough Bulls team. I don't think people understand like this is a good Bulls team. They're, they're not you know, a bad team. And so it was good to see uh, these Rockets continue their stellar play against good teams. Absolutely. On that note, Madison, you know the drill. Let everybody know where to track you down at. Yeah, you can go follow me on X, Twitter, um, uh, Madman Leaks. Uh, Come talk Rockets ball with me. And that's going to do it for another edition of Locked on Rockets. As always, thank you so much for checking out the show. If you haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing wherever you listen to your podcast or on YouTube. Just search Locked on Rockets. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. And if you're listening via Apple Podcasts, a five-star review would be absolutely amazing. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. And we look forward to having you back right here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball.